What's up, Style Nation? Welcome back to another Style for Life episode with your girl Katie here. Super excited about today's episode because we're going to get into the exact process, the exact step-by-step process that I use with my clients to reignite that style spark. Maybe you feel like you've lost a little bit of your spark. You lost a little bit of your edge in the pandemic and 2024 is going to be your breakout year. COVID's over. COVID hangover is over and we're ready to get out into the world. So let's make it magical. Let's do this. So I have to tell you that today's episode was inspired by two really cool calls last week. Well, one of them was a podcast. The other one was a call I had inside of the Style Squad. So in the Style Squad, we have a monthly cadence of calls that we go through. Well, it's actually weekly calls and it's a monthly cadence that we flow through. In the beginning of every month, we kick it off with an intentional setting for what's your style story this month? What are your goals? What are you trying to achieve? How do you want to feel? And how does our style plan that? How can we support each other? And how can we use the squad to boost each other, right? Because it's a community of entrepreneurs who are fucking amazing and one of our squad members is a burnout coach and a tarot card reader who does these magical play dates and she's so awesome i've partnered with her on the podcast before i have episodes with ash burnside we collaborate a lot in the spring and the fall and talk about the trends and how we can utilize them for our astrology signs and how we want to feel so i had her come inside it and speak to the group. She's in the style squad. So I was like, hey, I would love for you to kick off our monthly mixer this month and set the stage for like what we can expect and how we can use our style for November and do a quick tarot card reading. She's like, all right, awesome. Let's do it. And we're going to do it collectively, like a collective group reading. And I was like, sounds amazing. So she pulled it and there was three cards that pulled and there was two that came up that really just spoke to me. And I wanted to just use this opportunity today to say, to take you through that process, right? To say like, the first card that came up was a magician. And the magician, if you're not familiar with tarot, is one of the first cards. I am not a tarot queen, so like, do not get this twisted. I'm telling you how this comes back to you igniting your style spark, because that is what I am the queen of. But the magician holds a special place in my heart, because when I lost my job in 2020 in the pandemic, the very first person that I did a coaching call was with was with a career coach. And he said, I'd love to pull one of the archetypes for you. Like, have you ever heard of Carl Jung, right? I was like, yeah, of course I have, right? I love psychology. I remember learning about him in psychology. And he was like, you know, there's 12 archetypes. Let's figure out which one you are. So we did it. And he was like, you're the magician. Like, you have the magic in you to do whatever you want to do, right? You get to create transformative experiences. You get to transform your life. And I was like, yes, you're right. You're right. And of course, it was super inspiring. So when Ash came into the Sound Squad and she pulled the magician card, that was the message, was that you're the magician, right? Like, you have everything you need. When you look at the tarot card, it has all four of the signs on it, right? The air, the earth, the wind, the fire. It has the pinnacle, the swords. What are the other ones? The cups. It has everything. You have everything you need within inside of you. You just have to remember that. And I was like, yes, it's so true. And of course, like I said, it resonated with me. And it was a full circle fucking moment because when I lost my job, this guy was like, hey, let's figure out your archetype. Oh, you're the magician. It's all about transformation. Whatever you're doing, you have to feel like you're creating transformation. Like you have the magic within you to do this. And then when you dig into my human design, I'm the revolutionary Ringa Lita. So when this came up in the Style Squad, in this community that I dreamed of and put together, it was such a moment. And the ladies were like, yes. And that is always my message to you, is that it's actually already in you. The style is already in you. The spark is there it just gets lost along the way right like things happen I've been there I've done that I've been obsessed with style and fashion and beauty products since I was old enough to like get my hands on Aquanet in the 80s okay it's always been there but we all go through life transitions we have kids we have jobs we lose jobs we start businesses we lose businesses we get married we get unmarried we do all these things right we lose friends like the earth is constantly evolving and you're constantly evolving and sometimes it takes us a little bit of time to get back to that the other card that I have to tell you about that inspired today's episode was the Page of Cups. And it was really the message of like, are you ready to accept the good things in life? Or are you always waiting for the shoe to drop? Raise your hand if you're guilty. 
I think every now and then we all get a little guilty of that one. So that being said, I want you to take a deep breath. I want you to get ready to receive the good things in life and don't look at them as more things you have to do. I do this constantly. Anytime someone gives me advice, I'm like, sounds great. That's just another thing I have to do. It's another thing I have to do. It's another thing I have to do. But I'm really trying to embody this idea of slowing down to speed up and really getting to know myself and trusting that I am the magician and that I can create magic in my own life and I do have the tools inside of me. And if I don't have the actual tool inside of me, that if I get quiet long enough and if I learn enough about myself, I will know what is really missing from me that I can get help with versus me needing validation from outside sources. And I think this is a really important conversation when it comes to style, because when it comes to style, it's around allowing yourself to be right. There is no style Illuminati out there judging you. We think that there is. We think that there's someone out there judging every move we make, right? And it doesn't matter because, yeah, the, technically there is people out there judging you every move you make, and it doesn't matter. So whether what you do, someone's going to love it, someone's going to hate it. doesn't matter. But when it comes to fashion, there's this real big undertone of, like, doing it wrong and not being stylish and just not knowing what's going on. And I get it. I totally get it. That's what the industry was positioned to do for a really long time. But when you're passionate about something, the way I am passionate about fashion and style and clothing and beauty products, you can see a different side of it. I can see the light and all the dark. And that's what I really want you to take away from today's episode. This is about you. You were the magician of your own style story. It's already inside of you. So together we are going to unlock it. Unlock it. What do magicians do, right? They're doing tricks right in front of you and the, it's sleight of hand tricks. It's all with things that exist. It's all with things that are already there. We just don't see them and we're just not seeing how they're happening. So let's get behind the curtain today. Let me be your style magician. Let me show you the magic in this. Let me help you find the magic inside of yourself. And I'm going to take you through this exact process. And remember, some of this might sound annoying because this is how I feel every time I listen to a podcast. <laughs> we do this, do this, do this. I'm like, ah, right? But it's always the same process. The framework looks the same for a lot of things because the framework works if we work, right? If we slow down and we do the work and let's not even call it work late, let's call this shit fun. And the amazing part about style is the framework and the work that we're gonna do here, take this and apply it to every part of your life. I say this all the time. Your style is literally a mirror of how you are feeling, of your outlook on life, on what you were doing, of what you were thinking that morning. Did you prioritize getting yourself dressed into clothes that make you feel amazing? Did you prioritize putting on something other than black? Nothing's wrong with black, I love the color black. Are you wearing the black because it's powerful for you? Or are you wearing black because you're trying to hide today, right? Like you get to do this. And when you really dial in and you just take that look down at yourself and you let your clothes signal to you what you're doing, you can start to emotionally process where you're at. You can start to learn how to really tap into who you are, to know yourself, to create acceptance for yourself, to respect yourself. I want you to use your style to build unfucking wavering self-worth and self-love so that you don't doubt your business and so that you don't doubt your gifts and so that you don't doubt yourself. Okay, now that we're off on my soapbox and me telling you why you're the magician and how we're going to magic you up and make your life amazing, let's dive into the exact process. So I'm going to tell you like the five steps, the exact process. I'm going to really focus on the four foundational steps that I live and die by. And these are the ones that everyone always wants to skip. It's the unsexy, right? It's the planning your week every week consistently that makes you amazing, right? It's the 1% better. And if you're like me, I'm always looking for like the next big mountain to climb, the next thing to check, right? I don't want just 1% better, but I have learned that that's really where the growth happens, right? Like that's really the evolution of life is in that getting 1% better, stronger, faster every single day. It's not always in the quantum leaps. And I think that when we focus on the 1% every day, that in hindsight, the quantum leap just happens. And maybe sometimes it sets us up for that quantum leap. So number one in the exact process to ignite your style spark is feel into your words. I was listening to Catherine Zinkina's exact process on how to manifest. And I was like, oh my God, I'm doing this because it mirrors 
my style process. Well, kind of, right? But the number one was, how do you want to feel? Feel into how you want to feel. And I personally, over the last few years of manifesting this business after losing my career, I'm really frustrated by that because I'm like, I feel like shit. <laughs> okay, I just lost my job. I feel like shit. I don't know who I am. Being in transition is uncomfortable to humans, right? Like, we don't like that. And they're like, feel how you want to feel when everything is great. You're like, well, if I could do that, I wouldn't want the thing, right? Like, that's how I feel. So, like, if that speaks to you, let me know. I was like, okay. But I've really been leaning into this, right? I've really been leaning into those moments where I feel pure joy. I've been really been leaning into those moments now that my confidence is soaring after a couple of years in business, and I want to share this with you. It's getting super clear on what the feelings are. And I tell people this all the time. I know you want to be comfortable. I know you want to feel confident, but I want you to slow down. And I want you to think of like, how do you really want to feel? The word confidence and the word comfortable, amazing words. I love words. I love alliteration. But I just want you to slow down and ask yourself, what do they really, really mean to you? I want you to peel the layer back, just one more layer. Those are very popular words. And what happens when we hear things over and over and over, like our subconscious just picks them up and we want to buy into them. And then we start to forget exactly what they mean. So I'm challenging you to feel into your words and like actually look up the definitions of them. Okay. Today, right now, if someone asks me, how do I want to feel when I hit my goals, my big life goals, when I take my kids to Italy, when I start these quarterly trips, so even when we just go to the bowling alley as a family, how do I want to feel? I want to feel in awe of the experience that I've created. And I want to feel tranquility. I literally looked this up. The definition of tranquility is to not feel pressure. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's my Enneagram 3. I don't know if it's my Aquarius. I don't know if it's me being a firstborn child, but I constantly feel a constant state of pressure as a quote unquote high achieving, overachieving woman, right? It's this constant state of pressure. Yes, I want to feel fucking confident and comfortable. Who the fuck doesn't want to feel confident and comfortable? But I wanted to take a step further than that because those are the words that are in the ether all the time. And if you're listening to this podcast, I know that you're tired of the status quo. This podcast was birthed out of being tired of the status quo. If you've been on this journey with me, this podcast is almost four years old. Almost four years old. Four years ago, the status quo was squeezing me. It was squeezing life out of me. So when I hear words like confidence and comfortable, and yes, I use them too, I'm asking you to pause for a second and think of, are those the actual words you want to feel? Or take it a step deeper. Make it your own. Make it feel good to you. A word that's been coming up for me, which is weird, and it's not even sexy, is methodical. Because intentional is another word I overuse all the time that everyone uses all the time. But for some reason, methodical is like jamming with me. And I'm like, ooh, what does that mean for me? So if you've ever been in a workshop with me or you're in the style squad or you're, you're a one-on-one client of mine, you've heard me say this before. The definition of confidence is unwavering uncertainty of the power that's within you. Now that shit sounds sexy to me. I don't know about you unwavering certainty. Like no matter what decision you make, you are certain that you will grow from it, that you will learn from it even if you fail, right? Like you're certain that your desires are going to come to you. You are certain that you're worthy of everything you want in life. Like you're certain of everything. You're certain that you can forgive yourself. You're certain that you respect yourself, that you love yourself. Just peel back the layers. Like to me, this is what making, when people say, how do you want to feel? This is what like makes it really fun. So step number one in my process for igniting your style spark is let it be juicy. Feel into your words. Pick your three words. And these aren't the three words that have to stay with you forever. These are the three words that are going to guide you on finding the style spark that you feel like you've lost for right now. This is just right now. It's going to evolve just like nature has evolved over millions and billions of years. You are going to evolve over the millions and billions of seconds of you being fucking great. But how do you feel right now? Right? Feel into your words. Then number two, and I know what you're going to say about this one. Katie, I haven't been on Pinterest in so long. Oh my God. I don't want to get on Pinterest. You're going to spend more time trying to figure out your password for Pinterest than this exercise I'm going to give you, but I promise you it's going to be worth it, okay? So I want you to 
log into Pinterest, dust that account off. Yes, it's social media, but it's not social media in the same way that like Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn are Facebook, right? If you doom scroll on Pinterest, it ain't gonna be doom scrolling. It's just gonna be straight up inspiration. So I want you to dust off your Pinterest account. I want you to set a five or 10 minute timer, your choice. And I want you to create a board that says Katie style me or my style or my style spark or whatever you want it to be. And I want you to just save pictures that make you feel amazing. Either you can use the words that you wrote down, like confident looks, smart looks, fall 2023, winter 2024. You could even start looking for spring 2024. You can look up things that you know you like or maybe pain points that you're currently having in your wardrobe, like jeans, jeans for my body type, jeans for apple type, jeans for pear body shape, like whatever it is. Or you can just like get fucking inspired. Let this be for you. So for 10 minutes, the real exercise here isn't to actually even get that deep into it. So let me pump the brakes. We'll talk about a uh, body shape in a different episode. Let's just get into your inspiration. Okay. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. I can't help it. I'm going to blame that on my big uh, Aquarius vision energy. I just want you to have fun on this. So number two, dust off your Pinterest account, save 10 minutes, and just pin shit that makes you feel good. Yes, you can use some of those keywords I was talking about if you want to do fall trends 2023 or French looks 2023, like whatever you're naturally know that you're attracted to to get the ball rolling. Because the beautiful thing about Pinterest is this is an online mood board, right? It's an online visualization vision board. It's going to just feed you more and more of the things you want. This algorithm is actually working for you, not against you, right? So just set the 10 minutes and then don't look at it, just pin. And then when you're done and the 10 minute timer is up, I want you to then take a deep breath because you're killing it. You're a queen. We got you here. Won't get you there. We're reigniting that style spark that you lost and you're going to go back and I want you to just look at your Pinterest board. We do this all the time. We did this in the style squad in the beginning of last year. We just did it in the unlock your style story and it's super powerful because you will just start to see themes come through. So number three is I want you to find your theme. You've got your words. You did your Pinterest exercise. Now it's time to find your theme. What themes are coming through for you on that Pinterest board? How do they relate back to how you want to feel? They do. Because look, this is our aunt. This is where art meets science, right? So if you told me that you wanted to feel luxurious and we get into your Pinterest board and the theme starts to appear as flowers, maybe some flowy tops, then that's what makes you feel luxurious. Don't be wrong. Allow yourself to be right. You can't to be wrong because this is your style spark. This is no one else's style spark. This is all about you. Okay. So find your theme and get really clear on that. Be like, oh, I see a lot of flowers. I see a lot of blue. I see a lot of jeans. I see a lot of skirts. Like just get curious about what you see there. Don't judge it. It means we're just starting to understand the little things. This is a work in progress, right? This isn't just a one and done. This isn't just like, oh, here's my style spark and now I'm going to just go buy some stuff on Black Friday and I'm good, right? This is the constant evolution and journey of you. It's always going to change and it's going to change season to season. And the more people are, you're around and the more things you expose yourself to and the more things you learn about yourself, the more it's going to change. We, the Style Squad has been up for almost about a year now, and we did this practice in spring of last year. We did it again this fall, and everybody was like, wow, I've learned so much about myself, and I've come such a long way being in this community, and I've learned so much about other women. I feel more curious to explore. I feel like I'm ready to explore these different sides of myself. So just let yourself be curious. Curiosity is actually one of the values inside of the Style Squad. As humans, I think it's so valuable to constantly stay curious. We live in a world where it's really easy to fear getting canceled by others, by things that we say, and I'm a big proponent of staying curious. Because if you don't have experience in something, how could you know to how to be right or wrong? And the same goes for yourself, right? If you haven't experienced this in a long time or you're just like coming into a new phase of your life and you know what your style is, but maybe, like I said, you lost the spark a little bit because you're going through a big transition and you're ready to be seen because 2024 is your breakout year. Just allow yourself to get curious. And this is where I think the magic really starts to happen is with 
Number four of these foundational processes, I walk my clients through these. I go through these with Style Squad. I share these in the Unlock Your Style Story event. These are tried and true, right? They work. Number four is the lifestyle chart. I want you to take a few minutes and look, I'm giving you step-by-step -step process. If you want to break this down to like day one, I'm going to figure out my words. And day two, I'm going to play with Pinterest. And day three, I'm going to find my theme. And then day four, I'm going to pop in and do this lifestyle chart. Break it up however you want to do it. I totally get it. Pause here if you need to. Write it down. I do that all the time when I'm listening to my favorite podcasts. Podcasts are entertaining. They can be educational. The one thing that I think that happens with podcasts is we just consume and we consume and we consume. They are like little mini lessons. They are people pouring their hearts and soul. Take some time and pause it. Or what I do a lot, because I like to walk when I listen to podcasts, is I open up my notes app and I just will jot down the key things. And I will go back to those in a planning session when I'm planning and I'm thinking of things. But really, when I write things down, it helps me remember them anyway. So sometimes I don't even have to go back. Again, this isn't about giving you more things to do. This is about you getting consistent and knowing who you are and what you want. Because everything I'm sharing here with you today about igniting your style spark is going to help you. Those same words and how you want to feel in your clothes are probably the same words and how you want to feel in your business every day. Probably the same words and how you want to live in your life every day. If you're listening to this podcast, I know that your business is built around your why. And your why is built around something that's really important to you. And it's important to you because it makes you feel a certain way. So I'm not asking you to go do more things. It's not that. I hear this a lot because I feel it a lot. So I probably attract this a lot. It's overwhelm. This is why the word methodical is really starting to resonate with me because it's like, where else in my life can I use this? Where else in my life is this showing up for me? Because it's not just in this one place. It never is. And that's really the gift. That's what the magician is teaching you. Okay? So number four. After we fill into our words, we've dusted off our Pinterest, we've figured out the theme of our Pinterest, and now we're going to create our lifestyle blueprint. I love this exercise. I love updating this exercise. I personally do this exercise. It's a pie chart. You can do it on, I created one in Canva, obviously for presentation. I update it for myself. You can draw it on a piece of paper, whatever feels good for you. But I want you to take a chart. I use my journal. God, what is it called? It's the um, like law of attraction journal. Every, the end of every month, there's like the pie chart and it's broke down into like the wheel of life, right? And it's like, here's how I was feeling financially and how my career and my family and my spiritual life and all that, right? I want you to take that same kind of concept and I want you to break down this pie chart into how do you spend your time with your lifestyle. And if your current lifestyle doesn't match the lifestyle that you actually want, then you get bonus work. I want you to create two. I want you to be really, really honest. Honesty with ourselves sucks, but it's so necessary. And I want you to do a lifestyle chart of your current lifestyle. I really wouldn't break this up into more than four buckets. I think there's usually about four key buckets, especially when it comes to our clothes, that we're trying to get to. And if, like I said, if your current lifestyle doesn't match the lifestyle that you're achieving, you can create, or that you're really actively working towards, you can do too. But this is what I would say. How do I spend my time? 75% of my time is spent doing X. That's a lot. 50% of my time is spent working. Now, the other 50% of my time is spent doing other things, right? And this is just an example. This isn't my real one. So you could say 50% of my time is spent working. 25% of my time is spending time with my family. The other 25% of my time is going to the gym, hiking, doing physical activities that I love. And the other 25% of my time, again, making this up, is going on date nights with my husband. Now, the date night one is big on my board because it's a big goal of mine to constantly have these date nights once a month with my husband. So now we have this board on how we want to feel, the lifestyle that we're creating, where we spend our time. Casual weekend wear, date nights, or presentations, big business events. Those are all examples of things that could be on here. And I want you to take that. And I want you to look at it in percentage-wise because sometimes it helps to add numbers to things that can feel really flowy and art, right? Like style, right? It's art and science. And I want you to take it to your closet. 
And I want you to look in your closet because I realize you might not be recording podcasts in your closet like me. You might not be hanging out in your closet like every day like I am. And I want you to look at your closet. And I want you to say, out of the clothes that I wear on a daily basis, that's another podcast, are 50% of them clothes that make me feel amazing for my business. I'm working every day. Are 25% of them clothes that I love to wear on date nights? Are 25% of them clothes I love to wear when I go to the gym, go hiking, or going on adventures? And are 25% of them, you know, loungewear that I like to spend watching TV and movies with my family? The answer is no. Then this is a fantastic place to start, right? If the answer is yes, then great. Lean into that more. Now we got to figure out, go back to that theme and understand where the theme is not matching the clothes that are actually in your closet, right? And then we can start to build methodical, intentional shopping and styling from there. But if your lifestyle chart does not match your wardrobe, this is an amazing place to start and ask yourself why. If we don't have the clothes for the event, if we don't have the clothes for the activity, it's one more hurdle that we have to jump to get there, right? I'm going to use date night, for example. My kids are a little bit older now, so it's a lot easier. But when our kids were younger and we really wanted to prioritize time alone and out of the house and be out of the house working and out of the house as parents, if I didn't have the date night clothes, like it was just one more hurdle I had to jump. Cause it was like, okay, first we have to get a babysitter. Okay, now we gotta make reservations somewhere. Okay, well, what weekend don't we have anything to do that we can actually even go on a date, right? Between soccer games and family birthday parties and whatever else, holidays, things are coming up. Now it's like, oh, well, I don't even have anything to wear. Plus I'm tired, let's just stay home. Let's just do this. But deep inside what I really wanted was to go on those dates, right? And so I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, like I have to have the wardrobe to, that supports the life that I want. If you say, I've done my goals for 2024 and I want to be on one speaking engagement every single month and I want to do a TEDx talk and I want to show up on Instagram live every week and I want to do lives on LinkedIn every week. Does your wardrobe support that? And I don't mean, do you have a ton of clothes? I mean, do you have clothes that make you feel really, really good? that are gonna help you show up in that part of your life. If not, that's where we move into number five, which again, is gonna be a whole nother episode. And that's all about taking action. This is where we get really intentional on what to shop. This is where we get intentional on where we should shop. This is where we get intentional on our body shape. But before we get to any of the taking action, we need to know who we are, what we like, what themes, are coming up for us. What is our style? What is our style spark? What is that thing that makes us us? It's like when someone says, well, who's your ideal client? And what's the market? Where do they hang out? And you're like, I don't know. I just want to make sales in my business. You cannot get to making sales until you know who the client is, until you know what her pain points are, until you know where she hangs out. And that can be frustrating, especially when you don't know. I remember feeling like that in my business. I was like, I don't know. She just wants this. But no, actually, she wants this. But it took me like three years to figure that out. And like, yes, I get it. It's not fun. But these are the steps to getting there. I personally think that style is a lot of fun. And I think if you use this as a framework for all those other things that you're trying to figure out about yourself, about your clients, about your partners, about your kids, whatever it is, you can start to see the threads and the cross lines and the through lines through all of this. All right, lady, well, that is the exact process to ignite your style spark. So I want you to find the magician with inside of you. And I want you to DM me, email me, tell me what your style words are, send me your Pinterest board. I'm holding you accountable to do this because it's fun. And this time of year is perfect for reflection. Not only is it shopping season, and I don't want you to waste your money buying things that aren't you, but it's just a really good time. Things are slowing down. You're probably going to have a little bit more time off than usual. It's time to get to know yourself. All right, I have some amazing resources for you in the show notes. If you want to learn more about the Style Squad, you guys know I have a really fun Black Friday offer right now. If you're not a membership person and you're looking for a Style Wing Woman, all of that information, how we can set up your style chat so we can do the magic on you will be in the show notes. So go check that out. And if you love this podcast so much and you love it as much as I love it, please rate, review it, and share it with a friend. It means the world to me, and it's the easiest way that you can support me and the show so that we grow and that we continue to show up every week and be amazing together. All right, lady, I will see you on the other side.